In exercise four, we're going to be continuing on with this shot and we're going to be looking at how we start to work with track mats. So let's look at, um, at what we've got so far. We've got our little track on our first front card here. Now I want to do a, another track on our back card. Now, because we're going to be using multiple layers, uh, we should get into the habit of labeling our layers nicely in the layer controls. So I'm going to call this one uh, left card track and the reason I put the little dash TR at the end is just so that I do know that um, certain layers are tracks and certain layers are masks so it just helps me when I've got lots of layers that I can easily keep uh, keep track of, of which ones are which so let's come in here and let's just draw as we did before a little first shape up here and let's call this one middle card track. And I'm going to leave my parameters at the default settings for now. That's going to be uh, that's going to be more than enough. I should just mention that the minimum percentage of pixel used here, um, this default value will change depending on the uh, size of your the frame, so the size of footage that you're using, and the size of the shape that you're tracking. So we've got uh, working on an HD frame and uh, the shape here is quite large. So it's given us a minimum percentage of pixels used as 30. So there's a good balance between uh, speed of tracking and accuracy. So sometimes if we, if we aren't getting the accurate results that we need here, we can just crank that up a little bit. But I think uh, to begin with, you know, the default value is, is pretty good. So, all right, let's have a look now up at the top. And we'll have a look at some of the options up on our viewer now. So the first drop down menu we have here shows us the various things that we have uh, available for us, the various footage that we have available for us. We have our slider 001, which is our main clip that we've imported in. We've got the two mats that we've created for our different layers here. And we've also got the default clips that come in as standard with every single project. Um, and these are the ones that we can use for insert clips. Now, if we bring in more footage to uh, to check things out, you know that will also show up here as well. And if you're working with Mocha Pro and you're using the other modules like the uh, Remove or the Lens, um, then these will also, as we process those out, these will also appear up here as well. For now, we'll just leave that on slider, and we can work in either full, half, or quarter res. And you can see that this this is dropping down, and this uh, will. And once these low res proxies have been cached in, this will actually help smooth in um, the uh, the performance of the of the system. This was actually much more useful when computers weren't as powerful as they are today. So, and today I work in full res all the time, um, even when I'm working just on a on a laptop out in the field. But you know, if you are working with a, an older computer, uh, then you can take that down to uh, to half or quarter res. The next group of buttons up here just show us what um, what channels we're going to be looking at. So at the moment we're looking at the RGB channels. We can turn those off and see basically nothing because we've got nothing selected. Uh, we turn those back on and if our clip has an alpha channel, we can check out the alpha channel there. Um, you can see this is pure white now, which means that uh, the whole frame is is turned on. So the whole frame is opaque. Now the interesting one for uh, for us now is actually these mats here. So the mats and the uh, the paint bucket here. So if I just click on mats at the moment, it's showing me a cutout of my currently selected layer. Uh, and if I turn the other layer on, it's gonna show me that instead. Now if I turn my paint bucket on, instead of just uh, showing me a cutout on a gray background, we actually get our uh, ruby lift effect to so our, our little um, mat overlay coming on. And as we saw in an earlier tutorial, we can just come in and color code all of these just by changing the layer controls over on the side here. And if we want to make this overlay stronger, we can just scroll that up and get it, well, the closer it gets to one, the more opaque it is, one being the absolute maximum and 0.1 being the absolute minimum. But what if we wanted to see all the mats at the same time to see how they're, um, how they're interacting? Well, we can come in and just click on the drop down menu on the mats and take a look at either all mats or selected track mats. So we had selected mats turned on, so we were just looking at one at a time. 
Selected track mats doesn't seem to be doing anything different at the moment. But let's see what's going on. Turn this back to selected match just for the time being. And let's see what happens when I start to try to track this one through. So let's just uh, come here and we'll just track this backwards. And I should remember, actually I only want to track the mid card. I've already tracked the uh, left card here. So I'll just turn off the cog there and let's track again. Let's track it through a bit faster. Now let's see what happens when these two interact. Okay, so far so interesting. We're getting a little bit of drift coming in here. I mean, it's, it's drifting quite a lot now. And now we're getting a huge, huge amount of distortion coming in. And this is totally expected because Mocha doesn't intrinsically know what's, what's going on in the footage. It only knows what we, we tell it. And we've told it that we've got one, let's actually turn the logo off here for a second. We've told it we've got one shape going on here and we've told it we've got one shape going on here and we're just tracking this one shape here. But without us telling it, it can't know what's going on at this edge where they're actually meeting because it could quite easily be that this shape here isn't being intersected by, by something else. It could just be that this is folding in or moving in a, in a different way. We need to tell Mocha actually what's going on with regards to layer order and how these shapes should interact. And this brings us to the idea of track mats and layer order. When dealing with multiple intersecting shapes, layer order is extremely important because here's where we're telling Mocha which uh, bits are closest to the camera and which bits are furthest away. When I say bits, I mean shapes, obviously. So at the moment, we're telling it that our mid card here is on top. So we're saying that this card is closest to the camera when in reality, Obviously, it's uh, further further away from the camera than the left card is here. If I just bring this down underneath, so now we have our left card on top and our mid card underneath here. And turn my mats back on here. And this is just, remember, selected mats. And we can see they're just interacting here, or they're just overlapping here, I should say. But if I turn this to selected track mats, you can see now what's going to happen when we track this through. Now, because we've changed the layer order, Mocha knows that this left card is above or in front of the mid card here. And this has big consequences for when we start to track this through. So I'm not changing any of the other parameters. I'm just going to go back and retrack this and let's see what happens. So I'm just going to go through and um, I'm going to come in actually into my dope sheet here, come to my mid card, and I'm just going to delete all of these keyframes. We'll be looking at the dope sheet later on. So basically I'm resetting my track here and let's just track that backwards again without touching any of the other parameters. And now you can see as these two interact that the top shape is being cut out and not being counted as part of the track. We've got other issues going on with that shape anyway. but it's really useful to know that this area here isn't being counted as our track. And we can see the distortion that's going on in the card, even though it is shearing when it shouldn't be shearing, we can see we're not getting the same squeeze going on as these two corners or these two edges interact. So if I come over here and maybe turn off the rest of these things, come back. And if I hold down the command key and scrub with the middle mouse button. I can zoom in and out of the dope sheet and just reset that one again. Track that backwards again. Remember this time only with translation turned on. And let's see as they interact here, we're not getting the same skew as we were before. And we're not getting any of that distortion as these two edges meet. So it's really important when you've got multiple objects that you come in and you get the layer order sourced out here. So if I'm gonna track this one forwards now, I'm gonna start tracking it forwards, have my hand hovering over the escape key, because I know what's coming up, and you know what's coming up. We're gonna get our right hand card coming in and going over the top. Now, what we could do 
is we could come in and track both the right card, right card track, and the, uh, and we'll turn off the everything apart from translation there as well. So we could track the uh, the right card track and the mid, mid card uh, simultaneously. But this could potentially lead to some uh, confusion going in, uh, in, depending on which order that those get processed. So I always find if you're going to use something as a track map, that we're going to track that one through first. So let's just quickly track that uh, right card through. And we can see where our original frame was, which is the first blue one here. And because we're not going to be tracking this card backwards uh, for the time being, I'm also going to use this opportunity to look at our layer properties down here. And we can come in and we can set the in and out point of individual layers so that they're only active for a certain range of the project. So here I'm going to just come in and set my in point here. So we're only going to be using this area here and onwards as part of the track map. So anytime I go before that, that object is not going to be seen anymore. And because we're using it as a track map, let's actually rename that to TM for track map there. If I did decide at a later date that I wanted to track the whole thing backwards, I can just come in and reset my endpoint just with the button next to it. But uh, for the time being, let's just leave that there. I don't need to track that anymore. So I can turn off the process cog, turn the process cog back on, on my mid track and process the rest of that out. So now as those interact together, we're getting still that perfect track going on, on the middle card. And it doesn't matter. And this is actually the really cool thing about the, uh, the plane tracker that I've just sort of actually skated over really. It doesn't matter when certain bits of the area go either off screen or get obscured by um, other objects because we don't need all of this uh, data to be 100% accurate because our minimum percentage of pixels used down here is actually only set to 30. So we're only looking for, uh, you know, 30% of the pixels to be matched before we're moving on. And this area that it's cutting out is maybe only a, a few percent, like 3% possibly of the entire area of the, uh, of the surface. So as we, if we have a look here, come in and just see what our, let's move us to a, back a little bit here, turn my mats off so we can see the card a little bit better. And we can come up and we can turn off the splines as well, just with this button on here. Toggle that off, get a better view of this card here. Insert our logo back into that. And let's just play that back. Turn my surface off now actually while it's there. And here we've got our track. And what we're looking for now is any sort of areas where the uh, the track is slipping or where it's bouncing out. Um, we can tell it's not 100% accurate right at this very moment, but, um, but you can see it's quite a consistent track, but that's gonna be quite straightforward to go in and, uh, and adjust, which we'll be looking at in the, in the next exercise. So that was an introduction to layer order and track mats. And it's important to get uh, those ideas uh, underneath your belt because when we start to build up more complex projects or see more complex footage, you know, it's these ideas that are going to be very key to getting the best possible tracking data. In the next exercise, we're going to be having a look at rotation, shear and perspective, and also looking at how we can start to adjust tracks where they start to go a little bit awry. But uh, I'll see you then. <laughs>